it's YouTube. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you might be. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome Maxim Konsevich from the Ashers, uh, who will tell us uh, about. Uh, uh, you have to remind me your title, Maxim. <laughs> I, I see only one circle. He's writing on the board. Okay, on periods of non-commutative? Motives. Motives, great. Okay, so uh, Maxim, it's your second time at our seminar. Uh, you gave it in person some years ago, many years ago, I don't remember when, uh, but, but you, you were in Warsaw and gave one of your talks in person. So your second time at the seminar, we are delighted to have you again. The floor is yours, the Zoom is yours, take it away. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so just that I prepare already my slides. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah. So um, as I have kind of quite a lot of time, I have to really to start slowly, and I want to first speak about periods in commutative geometry. Periods in commutative algebraic geometry. Uh, yeah, this actual name uh, we coined together with Don uh, Zagir. Mm -hmm. And wrote a paper, but uh, somehow uh, this story goes back to Grotendieck and Berlin, and uh, we just kind of popularize it. So, what are periods? Uh, suppose you have a smooth affine variety. It's defined over rational numbers. So you have uh, X sits in some affine space or some dimension given by system of polynomial equations. Equations and it should be a smooth variety. Uh, so there are uh, two things which you can do. First, one can consider the rank homology of X. It's homology of complex of algebraic differential forms. Consider polynomial functions of right algebraic. Commodo is complex. And the claim is it's finite dimensional. Sorry, Maxime, a very silly question. I should think about this as color uh, differentials for commutative algebra, right? In commutative algebra, yeah, yeah, like in differential geometry. You know, you use non commutative geometry, but like in differential geometry, you consider differential forms. Mm -hmm. And coefficients should be poly uh, polynomial functions in this variety. Yeah. It's finite dimensional space, graded space. Over, uh, say, rational numbers. Okay. Uh, uh, and now, uh, yeah. uh, one can consider another space. Uh, uh, yeah, this, 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 uh, this previous space is called the rank cohomology. Yeah? So the, uh, in, uh, the next space will be Betty homology. Uh, which is cohomology of, you can see the space of solutions of your uh, uh, points of your variety with complex coefficients and, and people kind of pedantically write this analytic topology, so it's not the risky topology, it's usual, usual kind of Hausdorff topology. And consider homology with rational coefficients. And uh, then it's also finite dimensional space. And uh, mm, 
this serum which was proven by Grotendieck is that uh, this, this spaces have the same dimension. Okay, uh, and uh, moreover, the following calls. One can make uh, kind of choose basis. Uh, one can there's a big pairing. Between the RAM homology and beta homology with values in complex numbers. Namely, you choose here a homology class of some form, which is closed. Here, choose homology class of some cycle. And then you integrate. And this goes to integral of form of the cycle, which is a complex number. And you get this pairing, and it gives, if you choose basis, choose basis, you get some uh, uh, square matrix with complex numbers. And the claim it's not a degenerate matrix. The determinant of period matrix will restrict to some degree of homology. Of period matrix that will be integrals of uh, alpha i or gamma j, something like this. The alpha i are forms and gamma j are cycles. And the claim is the determinant is invertible rational number times some non negative power of 2 pi i. Now, so this you get. Uh, this period matrix, which is invertible, and uh, uh, the numbers which can appear as integrals of uh, algebraic differential forms with rational coefficients of rational cycles are called periods. And more precisely, you see that they have kind of like two pi i also in, in the, the game in non-negative powers, and it is convenient. To add inverse, so P, uh, a kind of algebra of periods. In C, related by all possible signals. Closed forms and closed cycle and for all possible varieties. And inverse of 2 pi i. 2 pi itself is a period. Of course, it's 2 pi i is integral uh, of, a, of a dq or t or some circle, yeah. And but 1 over 2 pi is not. Uh, as we know the period, and um, uh, conjectural picture is about uh, this algebra of periods is the following one. So this algebra of periods is a countable dimensional, let's see, countable dimensional algebra over rational numbers. Countable dimension because there are countable many varieties over rational numbers, and then we have finitely many also finite dimensional choices for forms and periods. Yeah, so, so if you get countable dimensional algebra, it's limit of finitely generated algebra, so it's projective. If you can see the spectrum of this algebra, is, is projective limit of some finite dimensional varieties. Schemes over Q, but uh, but the claim it's it's uh, not just some kind of random algebraic varieties. It's it is a, it is a, it, it is a torsor over some pro 
of some pro-algebraic group, projected countable limit of finite dimensional algebraic groups. Pro algebraic groups, group, over rational numbers, which called Mativi Gallo group. In fact, uh, there are two of them because if you have a torsion, there is something active on the left, something active on the right. Uh, there are like Betty and the wrong versions. And from left and right action. Betty and the wrong. And uh, uh, in, in fact, I proposed a formula. If you get some, let's say, some variety y, let's say algebraic variety, let's say over u, which is a torsor over some algebraic group, like GLN, a fine transformations, whatever. Uh, then we get a map from y cross y cross y to itself. Namely, if you have three points, y1, y2, y3, uh, then there exists unique element of the group uh, G in the group such G of u y1 is equal to y2. And then you map it to G y3. Yeah, so uh, the structure of torsor can be described as a map from triple, so triple uh, copy of, uh, cube of your variety to itself. And if it translates of algebraic functions, we get uh, kind of something analogous to pop algebra to this triple co product. Uh, it has this. Uh, and gives. Uh, uh, triple multiplication and uh, the formula for the hypothetical formula for the multiplication is the following, following. formula is the point suppose we have some period matrix yeah we choose some basis of homology and some basis of homology and then the formula is the point what what will the triple coproduct of some matrix element, which is element of this big algebra of periods? I J not to this big algebra. B algebra of periods. And the formula is the following: sum of K L P A K. Then you multiply by inverse to period matrix at K L and then P L J. And the inverse to period matrix is again uh, has coefficients of root periods because the determinant is two pi i and we invert it to pi i. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, it's obvious. That's a formula. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of main conjecture in main like transcendental numbers. We have some other conjecture, but uh, I think this is really solid conjecture in about transcendental numbers, which we enter in the calculating these intervals. I, I just want to say this kind of uh, some remarks. Oh, somebody's is this some kind of somebody wrong? Uh, originally. Uh, we redefined de periods mu min mu Nagir. Uh, defined periods using not using pairs x and d and d is a divisor with normal forcing. Then, uh, when consider drum cohomology, XD, 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 
complex of uh, forms on X uh, such that restriction to D is equal to zero relative forms and Betty homology will be uh, perhaps D will be its usual homology pairs. So what is the basic example of period kind uh, from pairs? Uh, like, maybe I'll just go to the next page. Suppose, uh, so the basic example is logarithm of some number, like let's say two. Suppose X is a fine line of minus zero uh, or P1 minus zero infinity. Or, or, or rational numbers and the divisor is say two points like one and two so how we should draw it we have our variety x we kind of have zero one two and verify we have infinity we kind of remove two points and uh, then we can see the first homology of pair, we get to uh, rank two. And what is the period matrix here? Uh, one can integrate forms, let's say, dt over t or dt. It will be two representatives of uh, closed forms. And the cycles, we, we do something. Uh, we get, I don't know, some small cycle around one, or we get a pass. Connected to zero to one, yeah. So we get uh, two independent relative cycles to independent forms and then we can make integrals and you can do it yourself you get some lower triangular matrix you get log two you get one yeah so it's a particular example of uh, this calculation matrices matrix of periods and you can calculate by yourself this triple co-product in working this matrix if you like okay yeah so that's um so you get this number and uh, to my shame for many years kind of really decade almost two decades i ask everybody can one get maybe after multiplication by power two pi i log two as a period without boundary so i thought maybe it could be some filtration on the algebra periods how many uh, kind of you should have kind of smooth divisor or two two components or three components so it will be I thought it will be some kind of filtration out of periods, but the answer is no. This explains that we can obtain it after multiplication by 2 pi i. We have this two period matrix kind of multiplication by 2 pi i. We can obtain a spirit of a smooth variety, and it's, it's absolutely obvious one. And the same current can do uh, in higher dimensions or for general device is not corrosive. But let me explain uh, uh, namely what is going on. So we have this, uh, we have this um, two boundary points, one and two for, for our cycles. And now consider what's called conic bundle. So it's vibration over my variety with fiber can hyperbola outside of divisor and uh, coordinate cross inside divisor. So we can see the conic bundle over my x, uh, such it uh, degenerates. Uh, so we get like, like a parabola and degenerates to 
coordinate cross over divisor. So what does it mean algebraically? We can see the spectrum of algebra u. Uh, yeah, my variety also will be t, t will be coordinate on x. So you get uh, algebra function x, polynomials non variable, and also add two variables x and y, auxiliary variable, modal by relations that we have hyperbola which kind of degenerates exactly my two points. It's a smooth surface sitting in. Uh, here and um, when I get my, my cycle, like from here, uh, because we have kind of vibration here, we can draw a family of short uh, circles and hyperboles which generates to point, and we replace our interval by two dimensional sphere. And if you, if you make this replacement, uh, integral will multiply by 2 pi i. Uh, so, and in particular, get integral of this things which I draw, which, which fiber for the integral for one to two of these things uh, is equal to of what? I'm oh, sorry, I have to write what I integrate. I integrate form dt over t times dx times dy and divide by d of equation. This equation. And the integral is equal to 2 pi i log 2. Yes. Mm. Yeah, actually, we'll return later to this the same matrix of Pierce but in completely different context. But uh, that I want to show that's kind of really elementary trick which kind of escaped my mind for a very very long time and nobody was able to ask them this simple question yeah but it's it became complete reality at the end of the day so the, the, the so all intervals can be drawn without boundary uh, uh, is there a conjecture about subalgebra of calabria periods no 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 it's a different story I don't want to it. Yeah, uh, here we we're talking about field rational numbers. Uh, but now I want to uh, just briefly mention that one can generalize the whole picture to. Uh, finitely generated fields. Ah, so it's kind of finite extension of uh, uh, like u of some rational functions, means rational functions. This uh, brackets means different things in, in symmetrics, u of algebraic variety. Here, I mean rational functions, not uh, global functions, but some affine model. Now, so there, is this, there are larger fields like rational functions of several variables in the finite extension of field of rational functions in some independent variables. Yeah, suppose I have some algebra, this is my algebraic variety, some kind of base, uh, which I fix once for a while and want to study uh, to define what are periods of algebraic varieties defined over this field. So it means like families of algebraic varieties of Russian numbers. In order to, yeah, the rank homology we can easily uh, see. Yeah, we have the rank homology we have. Just the 
homomorphisms. We use the theorem for closed forms of a larger field. But what are basic homology? Uh, and also, what will be re replacement of numbers? Yeah, because instead of numbers, we should have like functions of many variables and pairing. Uh, so the idea is the following: choose on 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 my variety B, which is some, some some small model, some model of my field. Choose some variety. Choose a point and uh, some algebraic local coordinates. Some uh, meromorphic uh, rational functions. Uh, uh, some rational functions uh, set it locally near this point, the uh, mm, coordinates. And then I can embed my field to iterated Laurent series. So I can imagine that uh, T1, Tk are complex numbers such that one is T1 is very small, T2 is even smaller, and so on. Uh, but, uh, and, and yeah, so if you kind of like have T1 and T2 I approach uh, zero, like T1 is very small, much more, uh, or vice versa. T, just a second. Uh, I think T two is much smaller than T one, so it's kind of like by curve like this. And uh, uh, yeah, so if I remove some uh, algebraic sub variety, uh, this curve will still uh, some device of this curve will still stay in the sink and in this uh, this open part. But now one can think that all TIs are positive real numbers. So it's not just complex numbers, but real numbers ordered in the same way. So you get kind of um, uh, formal germ of a pass. And along this germ of a pass, you can see the commodes of your family of varieties. Of oh, homology of uh, yeah, suppose you get some variety which maps to B. It will be algebraic variety uh, uh, gives algebraic variety over, over this field. Algebraic variety of this field, and then we can see the. Uh, y of the inverse of the path of, of the point of this path, which I drew before. Again, complex coefficients and semantic topology. And because of Gaussman connection, you get uh, kind of the same locally constant vector space. So we can choose, uh, uh, consider. Uh, uh, actual cycle here, depending on variety, depending on parameters, can integrate form depending on parameters, and then the integral of my form, or think it will be something on small parameter, or maybe many parameters, and it will belong to something really tricky. It will belong to, uh, uh, to to write it Laurent series in maybe some roots of my variables and also add polynomials in logarithms. Uh, I think it will be polynomials, just uh, let me write kind of properly. Um, maybe just shrink it a little bit, just 
And what you write, you can also write, will be also finite polynomials. Yeah, so it, so it belongs to some uh, huge uh, ring, and this will be a replacement of of complex numbers as values as values of of, kind of, of absolute periods, and you don't have parameters. And here one can repeat the story. You get countable many, countable many elements of this uncountable ring, generate at one over two pi i, generate the story, and you get this co-product, and you have story. It goes on. Uh, yeah, so here you get kind of like mixture of periods and some series which satisfy Picard Hooke's equations. Yeah. Okay, Now I now I really start to go to non commutative world. Yeah. So thanks to Alan, we know the answer, but I'll just uh, uh, repeat you kind of basic. Definitions. Suppose we have algebra or some field. Oops, a second. Maybe of characteristic zero. Later, uh, I assume that Q is rational numbers. I have A will be unital associative algebra. And there is a basic kind of small b capital B complex. Uh, small b in, uh, in capital B apparatus, and I just recall that for any n greater than one, the small b is Hochschild uh, homological Hochschild uh, complex differential. Neighbors, and then get almost the last term. And then in the last term, real last term, you put a an in the front. Okay. And then Capital B is the following one. It's sum over all cyclic permutations of n plus one elements. Let's read indices model n minus one to n i. And here we get uh, something like this one plus a i plus minus one plus another guy. And then the basic thing is you get uh, um, total differentials, uh, then you uh, and uh, the question. Uh, 
where the separator acts. Uh, the fluted is operator acting in the infinite product of all these components. It's not sum but product. This is how you get nonsense. Uh, so parity of n is uh, 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 pairing, so to get z two graded complex. And it's called, uh, and what you calculate here, you get periodic cyclic chronology. Chronology of your algebra. Um, which is kernel of differential, from the image of the differential. Mm. Yeah, that's a kind of good notion, but uh, I am not totally happy with this notion, I have to say. Uh, again, suppose your algebra is countable dimension. Yeah, it's kind of like inductive limit. Then get product of guys. So you mix inductive and projective limits. And this uh, cohomology could be very unhealthy. It should have some kind of complicated functional analysis and this complicated topology. Uh, and mm, So it's not a really concrete object, I have to say. Uh, uh, so that's kind of nice kind of facts. If algebra is algebra of functions on smooth affine varieties, Then periodic uh, homology of algebra is the same as the rank homology of your variety as the graded space. Yeah, so we, uh, in this language, we formulate for non algebras what are kind of closed differential forms. In fact, uh, if not smooth affine variety, you get, uh, if it's not smooth, uh, you get, oh, oh maybe I undo, okay, great. Okay. If not smooth, uh, but uh, you, you get some um, algebraic variety in, uh, in some affine uh, scheme of finite tech, or affine scheme of finite tech, you get still finite dimensional. It's zero, it's, it's was proven by Sigan uh, mm, and Hagen. Uh, and the proof that's coincide with something like crystalline homology, like homology of formal neighborhood. Now, so this uh, periodic cyclic homology really works kind of for non smooth varieties as well as for smooth one. Mm, now, mm, yeah, it's maybe one fact. And another fact, if algebra depends on parameters, kind of like a lambda, a lambda is a base, uh, then you get flat connection on periodic cyclic homology. Mm. Let's hope it gets there Gauss Manning connection. Like for usual varieties, uh, uh, but uh, one should be kind of a bit careful because uh, if, if you vary algebra, uh, then homology can jump. Uh, uh, Yeah, for example, you remove some points and then points which you remove collide and you get a jump of homology. So it will be more general kind of like G 
more you'll follow the details. Yeah, so this is a uh, uh, notion of first connection. So it's really kind of wonderful notion of this periodic cyclic homology. Now, what are cycles of integrations? And uh, Alain proposed the definition of the cycle, it's called Fred Holland modules. And uh, kind of summable, Fred Holland, kind of summable, summable modules. Um, what is a Fred, Fred Holland model? I, again, I just say. And first part of my talk, it's really a review of uh, classical stuff. Definition of the point, what is odd Fred Golden? There are odd and even Fred Golden models because cycles are equally odd. Uh, and the, the, uh, the definition is the following. The odd Fred Golden model is a, is a Hilbert space. And of the countable dimension. Sense not, not huge uncountable six like L2 or some guy in the space H, uh, some homomorphism, uh, I don't know, uh, row of my algebra to endomorphism of this Hilbert space, and some operator F uh, said that. Self adjoint and squares full to identity map. So it's really decomposition of sum of two subspaces, plus and minus part. According to eigenvalues. And with the property is that such that for any element of the algebra, the commutator is F is compact operator. And the objective summable, and let's say P summable for some the P between zero, between one and infinity, so P equal to one, is summable if uh, this commutator not only compact operator but belongs to uh, uh, Strassen ideal. Let's call it operator at more. Okay, okay. Belongs to Strassen ideal. Is, is it spell of H, which is analog of LP space in uh, usual geometry. So it means that uh, if you consider uh, K times K adjoint X square root. And then trace take the trace to this power, the trace will be uh, finite. This uh, K can just can joint has discrete spectrum, get some sequence of numbers which goes to zero. And we say that it's called singular radius. Uh, so mu i uh, one, this is mu two, goes to zero, spectrum of this operator. And I said it's sum of mu i to power p is finite. Yeah, and this is ideal. Mm. Yeah, so, so for some for some number p, we should have this convergent property. Rho is homomorphism. Okay. Homomorphism. Yeah, maybe just kind of uh, kind of even uh, Fred Golden module. It's little modification. Uh, it's odd one and another operator gamma. Square root of one, and with the property that gamma anti commute is is f. And gamma 
half commute with rho k. Okay. Yeah, so the order even. Okay. Mm. And uh, yeah, actually, I have a little question to Alan. Uh, uh, you gave a definition for involutive algebras. Is it really necessary? For for which for for, for which algebras did you say I didn't hear? We start with, with, uh, with oh, with a star? No, it's not necessary at all. No, no, no. Yeah, because kind of doesn't look sure. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we define for operator for operator. Uh, uh, T such that Tf plus Ft is of trace class. How do you know this class in ideal? Uh, I didn't denote it. Okay. Ft. Uh, one can define can regularized trace. Yes. Half trace F multiplied by this guy. If T is already of trace class, it will be usual trace. And then uh, the following thing happened. Uh, suppose N is some odd number. Greater than one, I take it greater than this uh, summability constant for the thing, and we call it even. Uh, in order to define functional over on periodic cyclic homology, and what we do, we take this uh, representative of my cycle, get something in nth degree, and uh, we map. Uh, uh, Whole big complex, we just take something which stays in degree n and we make this corresponding component of the representative to uh, trace prime with zero k1 kn. In all case, and in any case, it will be slightly more complicated trace prime number with zero. And if n is sufficiently large, these things will belong to L1 and will be convergent. So it belongs to this class. It's kind of well defined. Uh, so that's uh, first property and uh, And dependence on n, or to n to n plus two, because we consider things of given parity, is given by some simple factor. We get essentially the same number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of to normalize you divide by value of factorial with gamma function. Mm. Yeah, so get this uh, guys. Yeah, so it's kind of looks formal algebraic object, but uh, how it comes from uh, uh, example of cycles from geometry. Suppose now X is Smooth compact oriented C infinity manifold. And as the algebra, we take C 
see infinity functions on that. Mm. No, what will be Hilbert space? Uh, we choose some uh, spin or bundle. X, choose some bundle. It's supposed to two sides, so uh, two pieces, and uh, uh, and here we'll get Dirac operator. I think you're speaking now about only what what class. So get Dirac operator and the bar and the D cross, and then we get Hilbert space. Space will be L2 sections, L2 completion of uh, sections of spin or bundle. Uh, actually, maybe I'll, maybe I'll call this stupid part. But, uh, uh, L2 section of spin or bundle. And what is F? Will be minus one on uh, on the part of the spectrum of the operator is some the same negative and plus one on part that is positive. You can make little mistake with some finite dimensional space, it doesn't really matter. So you got this it's it's a pseudo differential operator of order zero. And the claim that if you make a commutator, you get pseudo differential uh, algebra act by multiplication on sections of your bundle. So when you get commutator, you get automatically operator pseudo differential operators of order minus one. So if you take large power, it will be trace class operator. So you get this automatically mm. cycles. And the claim uh, you restore usual integration. Get usual integration of forms all fundamental cycles. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, just a nice example, but uh, this is really very dramatic. It's um, in, in all the theory of periods, it looks that you need to learn a lot of mathematics. You learn okay what learn was algebraic varieties, but now then you learn topology, then you want to learn what is smooth functions, differential forms, integration theory, measure theory. Yeah, it's all, all mess. And here it's really linear algebra, nothing else. Yeah, so that's uh, one thing that make a shortcut. One can uh, maybe some I don't know. One can really ignore it all completely. This was a, was a, um, a goal to get numbers. Yeah, so we get these numbers. And maybe now I can give you kind of definition. Uh, non commutative periods. Is a sub ring, is a sub -ring generated by one or two pi i and pairings between cyclic homology classes and uh, and recording modules. For all possible associative algebras, A, now the main story is over Q. Yeah, I consider algebra over Q, and uh, you still can map to operators in Hilbert space. 
So this is obvious claim. You can get commutative periods as a part of this ring. Uh, it's uh, completely obvious. Yeah, suppose we have algebraic variety of rational numbers, and we want to make integrals of some form of a cycle. Then we, if we take homology class of this variety, Uh, is Q linear combinations of of some bordisms of some C infinity C infinity manifolds which maps to X C. Yeah, so we can replace some algebra by bordisms. Uh, up to torsion represent the same things. Now, if you get C infinity variety. The map to complex numbers is the same as the map from algebra to C infinity functions of Y. Yeah. Now you, you replace integration using this Dirac operators business and you get integral of fundamental class. Yeah, so it's absolutely for free. You get these numbers. And the question do we get more or, or not? Mm. Yeah, in fact, there is something which uh, not totally clear to me. Whether this uh, algebra of periods, commutative periods, is countable. Mm. The story is for. Uh, uh, there are some kind of good arguments to believe that it's countable because we have rigidity. Uh, if you deform your cycle of integration continuous way in usual geometry and, uh, and try to integrate closed form, you get the same number, yeah? And the continuous deformations of representation. But even with this continuous deformations, it's not really clear to me uh, that you get countably many connected components. Mm. The reason uh, is the following. One can imagine theoretically it's possible to have infinitely many representations Uh, kind of infinitely many pre volume modules uh, such that direct sum, infinite direct sum, is still pre volume module. So you get kind of like small and smaller, uh, uh, you get convergent, uh, the sum of eigenvalues in one guy, it will be. Convergent, but another that will converge, but something much smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller altogether will be all convergent. It's still pre Yeah, so then for any subset in integers, you take some of Ri from I subset. Uh, is also free volume. Module uh, summable is still summable free volume module. Yeah. 
uh, and then you get definitely uncountably many periods because you can't uncountably many subsets. Yeah, that will be a very unfortunate situation. Uh, so it will be kind of like wrong numbers. Uh, I will uh, later tell you some ideas how to fight with this uh, theoretical possibility. Uh, mm. Uh, but before going on, I just want to uh, 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 just can click be some kind of signs indications that we get the same numbers for the commutative curve. Mm. The story is mm. uh, there are kind of like uh, two examples which you want to show. First, I want maybe to show start with quantum torus. That's a two-dimensional quantum torus. And by this I mean the following Algebra. I get algebra generated by two invertible elements. Model is a relation where x is equal to u x y. You use some rational number. Again, if I want to compare with my previous example, I get two. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I get this guy. Um, my guess is the following. matrix in yeah first of all uh, for this thing it's uh, we know what is e, 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 h even of this algebra as h h of we both have dimension two it's like usual torus and period matrix it's actually not guess it's kind of follows from those money from guess their those money connection The period matrix in even uh, again HP even homology of A, sorry, so B okay. uh, is the following one. Okay, let's let's keep for two multiplied by two times i. Yeah, so it's the same matrix which. We see for this commodity of pair for integration of logarithm. Yeah, so it's uh, so this is already something to understand why this quantum torus and P1 minus two points model another two points uh, after maybe changing odd to even because it's uh, the odd even commodity of odd commodity. Even uh, maybe multiply this uh, P1 minus two points by again C star by JM to have the same. This two pi i exactly correspond to this surface which I constructed. Um, well, it's the same, it's something we need to understand. Uh, Maxime, let me just ask a trivial question. If you replace q by any uh, positive rational number, I guess you get log q instead of log 2. Yes, right? yes, log q, of course, because it's two sure, just sure. kind of yeah, yeah. yeah, nothing else. Yeah. Huh? It's still the same, yeah, it's uh, oh, maybe kind of like in general. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so it's, uh, so it looks that it's uh, for the simple algebra, you get the same numbers. Uh, and there is a kind of a bit more complicated story. Kind of, there is a lot of deep differential gradient algebras. Uh, and for differential gradient algebras, uh, there is some uh, there was some kind of theory developed. Uh, uh, it's it's useful to not affine varieties. Uh, there is some. Uh, 
on a differential uh, kind of non commutative algebraic non commutative geometry for DJ algebras. Um, uh, HP is again well defined. So, analog of general homology is well defined. But what are analog of free volume modules? It should be something like topological A theory, yeah? Maybe dual topological and dual space homology with topological case theory. You mean it should be K homology rather than K theory, yeah, sure. K yeah, homology, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, this, this will be analog of, of beta co homology. Yeah, not cycles, yeah. So, so there will be isomorphism to beta the ramp. Okay. Yes, yeah, that, that's not uh, totally clear, but in, in algebraic geometry, when we study periods, and there is some story about weight filtration. And, uh, and uh, it's just kind of uh, associated graded pieces are homology of, uh, the homology, whatever, and the homology of, of smooth projective varieties. Are not really a fine scheme. And here's this kind of analog. Non commutative analog is uh, called uh, smooth proper categories. Proper, or maybe DG algebras. Uh, I, I can give you a definition. The definition is uh, very simple. You get some DG algebra. It's saying graded Leibniz rule, and uh, this proper means that uh, some or all integers of rank of n cohomology group of algebra with this space with differential is complex, so p squared to zero is finite. So you get total finite dimensional homology, and uh, smooth means that. Algebra is a perfect uh, bimodule in direct category. So it's mm, direct sum of finite, uh, so it's quasi isomorphic to direct sum of uh, extensions of A cos A opposite of bimodules with, with certain shifts, finitely many. So it's uh, some kind of nice things. One can actually formulate the things uh, in different ways. It was analyzed uh, uh, by So and, and Refuse. So it, it, in other ways, the following. You can say this algebra is uh, algebra generated. Okay, just any field. Free algebra with finitely many generators. Uh, with certain degrees, positive and negative, and such a differential of each generator is finite expression of previous generators. Yeah, so yeah, that's a kind of more concrete uh, things because if we generate we write find finite combination of some non-computer words, we get finitely many numbers as parameters, and this properness condition. Means that again, sum of i over n z rank of homology a is differential is finite, which is kind of uh, it does look constructive, but one can also make it for this very constructive something like you uh, have finite many checks on the computer, for example, for this differentials which you use. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so it's uh, so it's. These things are parameterized by finitely many parameters. You get some modular space which are finite dimensional break varieties. So, you and for such guys, for the smooth and proper, uh, there was a, you have uh, immediate theorem that the dimension of, of, of period cyclic homology is finite. And mm, uh, there was a series of papers by Gonzalo Taboada. 
uh, uh, he made some proposals to define category of motifs. So, yeah, those conjectures so to get beta homology. But then it looks as like you get the same numbers. You don't get new numbers at all. So in all examples which you know, you get it's all reduced algebraic varieties in one way into another. Now I just want to finish with uh, the following example, which seems to indicate that we really have new numbers and the things are much more interesting than uh, this little primitive algebraic geometry. Mm. So this is a kind of potential example. Some algebra. Uh, uh, such that the periods are exotic. And dimensional homology will be infinite. Mm. Let me just start with some very uh, kind of basic stuff. Suppose we have algebra or some field. Algebra and I get computing uh, derivations. Um, then one can make a DG algebra from this. And you multiply your algebra by exterior algebra over. Uh, space generated by some symbols pi from i from 1 to n now i find the exterior algebra with differential is equal to sum of i and make this derivation times multiplication by tau i that's called the square is equal to zero yeah uh, yeah that's just some construction but in some cases it really calculates uh, your periodic static homology. Uh, example, suppose you have algebraic variety which has some etal map to torus. Algebraic torus. Etal map, it means that dimension x is smooth and the Jacobian of P is non zero everywhere. Uh, for example, it could be the risky open part, like complement to things or some covering. Then, of course, then it means that if it's a time map, it means the tangent bundle is trivialized. Uh, you have uh, on a torus you get vector field, something like C, theta i, uh, like T i, D or U T i. It's trivialized. Mm. Oh, you can make up to a fine space. Yeah, yeah. So then you can find image many situation when tangent space is trivialized. Or you can even have a curve, algebraic curve with some um, rational vector field and remove zeros and poles of this vector field. Then you get trivialization, you get non vanishing vector fields. You get kind of like total non vanishing everywhere. Then, uh, then you can see the commodity of this algebra. Algebra with, with the differential. Uh, in this case, it's usual drum homology. You, you, it, uh, you can kind of write in this uh, frame at each point the your differential forms. This complex will be just the RAM complex of your guy, and you can call it usual drum homology. So this this guy has good chances to be equal to periodic cyclic homology. And it's true, for example, even for quantum tori. I think Alan make a long time ago calculations that you get quantum tors and uh, you get exactly this, uh, like for two dimensional quantum tors, you get two dimensional orthic homology, two dimensional homology, independent of what value of your Q for this quantum tors. And what algebra I want to define right now? Now I have algebra will be a localization. I kind of like remove a curve. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, so this algebra will be rational functions over again of these two variables x, y, invertible, modular relation y x is equal to u x, y. The q will be now algebraic number, not rational number. And I take absolute value of q equal to one. Now, so to the, maybe you get a little bit extension of your field, so you get q, uh, number two here. Uh, but also, we, I want to invert some polynomial. P, which is belongs to this P, that's my, that's my star. Now, for example, P could be something like this, one plus T, x plus y plus x minus y minus. That's it. That's example. We tease it against some rational number. Yeah, so add p inverse. My algebra. It's something like in uh, you can just remove a remove a curve. And my guess, yes, it's periodic cyclic homology of this. Uh, algebra is, is calculated like in commutative world via uh, this causal complex using commuting derivations because we have derivations uh, uh, um, we have two derivations t of x is equal to x t1 of y is equal to zero and we get another derivation sigma two and get two kind of in, in, in physical rotation, but if you remove something, it will be still derivation. It's an of the story. And uh, uh, what is the guess? Yeah, so this is my polynomial. Like this. My DG algebra will have three terms. And for this last term, we get a trace class to complex numbers given by coefficient in x0 to y0, because kind of like uh, what goes on? Uh, I take t less than one and absolute value of q is equal to one. Uh, when I make t, t is one, uh, ah, uh, this is like elliptic curve. Right? Yeah, some elliptic curve, but the point is the elliptic curve has no points with of when x and y are kind of norm one. Then my algebra embed, embeds to some C infinity functions on, on non-commutative torus. You can see the infinite sum C and M, X and Y M, and M integers, uh, infinite sums. And set it C and M uh, less than constant divided by one plus M plus M for capital N for any N. Yeah, so they, they have faster than uh, power decay. Uh, this, this, they get a kind of deformation of algebra C infinity functions. And when absolute value of Q equal to one, it's you know, the property of this property. And then it can see the zero coefficients kind of like residue. And this thing vanishes on, on commutators and on, on image of differential. So it's exactly as the cycle says, uh, on sense. So it will be uh, I think it's kind of like uh, integration for this Fred, for some Fred body module. But um, uh, uh, and the question is that. Now you, you want to integrate kind of like trace of one over p. And what you get, it's actually really funny. You can calculate it. It's uh, one over p. Let's, let's call this variable six q. Uh, maybe put here minus sign. Minus sign. Uh, 
you see that it's still the sum over n is zero to infinity, and we take trace of u to power n multiplied by this number t to power n, and this seems to be convergent. Yeah, so get a nice guy, and this will be your period. But it doesn't look at all. One can kind of try to write this. It's, it gets serious in a variable t, yeah. Uh, oh. Maybe just in this case here, why it is not a period, kind of algebra dramatic period, depending on parameters. And there is this, there are parameters t and also this parameter q. These are algebraic parameters of my problems. There are two parameters. And if one calculate it on a computer, it's really a, a lot of fun. You get this uh, uh, trace of one over p. You get some of a, some kind of like, uh, uh, infinite series. We see in q are, some Laurent polynomials in Q inverse, and the degree of the things in Q is grows like n square. So you get something like Q n square t to power n, some theta function. And this guy cannot satisfy in two variables any uh, Picard Fuchs equations for various reasons. Get like leading term cannot match for any equation with anything else. Yeah. So cannot satisfy the Corfu's equation. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like an in, in, in implicit proof that you get uh, not period in, in parameter space and how it's possible. I think, I think, I think, uh, yes, the period exactly homology is infinite dimensional. And and the reason is the following. We get one over polynomial, yeah? What, what does it invert polynomial? Uh, element of my algebra where before inversions are, are kind of Laurent monomials in X and Y. Then I get, we have the right general uh, uh, element of your algebra. It's kind of big product to get invert polynomials and put some monomial, then the invert polynomial, get put monomial. Then I can move them. To to get, uh, then I can move all x through y to get x to something, y to something. The pi are conjugation by some monomial. And it's not equal to p. You change some coefficients. You, you get essentially the same monomials, but you multiply some coefficients by some power of q. So there are different guys. So it looks that uh, what we remove, we remove kind of infinitely many algebraic curves, not one algebraic curve, which collide in the classical limit. So we get something like C star square minus infinitely many curves. Sorry, Maxim, just a stupid question. Is I in PI refers to what on the right hand side? PI? Oh no, it's this individual six is you move all x to the left to the to the left, say yeah. You start to conjugate this one over p. And you conjugate by some monomials, depending on what how many things you transfer. It will be the sequence of some fractions with some denominators. Yeah, so what it looks like, you get some kind of like a C star, kind of re remove from uh, let, let's write a kind of real picture, get from plane removed from six, and now start to remove some curve. Maybe slightly less greater curve, another less greater curve. You get kind of like infinitely many uh, shifted copies, which collide in a classical limit. So in a classical limit, you get finite dimensional homology, but in real life, it's infinite dimensional homology. How many this, this copies may be labeled, labeled, labeled in by two, uh, two integers because uh, in a conjugate, you get two parameters. Yeah, so you get something like. Uh, this is a picture and uh, yeah, so it's, it will be kind of like first 
kind of concrete example, then we see uh, this infinite dim dimensionality. And algebra itself, it's kind of nice. Uh, nice. It's not compact because it's infinite dimensional, but it's uh, what I uh, recall. It's kind of the claim is homotopy retract, so it's essentially like of uh, one of this uh, uh, things which I explained before without finiteness condition, and it was called algebra of finite type. I turn and review. Uh, and it's correspond to, let's say, scheme of finite types, kind of for finite dimensional uh, smooth varieties, but not, not a fine one. Mm. Now, so it's six for which we are a priori expect finite dimensional cohomology, but uh, in, in this uh, baby example, it seems that uh, uh, even for the schemes of finite type, you get infinite rank cohomology. Yeah, there were some indications that, that this notion of algebra of finite type is a bit sick. Uh, yeah, so technically, I do not go. There was some counterexample to some other conjectures by Yefimov. So, this kind of no good compactification and so on. Um, oh, sorry, maybe I just do I have kind of maybe five, ten minutes? Yeah, you have four okay. minutes, yes. Four minutes, okay. Yeah, so there was something which I promised. Uh, uh, Candidate for topological case theory, and uh, in a good best of the world, topological case theory multiplied by complex numbers should be a motion to periodic cyclic homology multiplied by complex numbers for algebras over U. It will be analog of the link theorem, uh, it's analog of basic homology. Yeah, the turn characters should be rational with rational coefficients. Yeah. As a morphism, so then I don't understand. Uh, ah yes, of course. So there's a discussion of yeah, yeah. If that is it's, yeah. It's, it's, to, to find a dimensional uh, in good situation of discussion. Maybe infinite dimension as examples. And what is uh, what goes on? If I have an isomorphism after tensoring rational numbers, is it possible that it wasn't subjected before tensoring? Piotr, we 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 can hear you are on. I'm so sorry. I forgot to to to. Sorry. Can I continue? Yes, I, on, I, I forgot to mute. I forgot to mute a microphone. I was thinking aloud. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose we have algebra, let's say, over complex numbers. It will be like I mean, kind of algebra of rational numbers multiplied by C, something like this. You can imagine, yeah. You see our complex numbers. Just a source of algebra, but suppose it's finitely generated. Actually, let me just tell you why it's finitely generated. It's kind of sufficient. In all this any periodic cyclic co cycle, in degree n, it will be algebra tensor n plus one. Yeah. So it's finite sum of finitely many of tensor products. It belongs to kind of. Finitely generated part. Raised to power n plus one. And we use only some one only one integer n calculation, or making use larger n plus two and so on. But if you use some concrete number, we really have restricted ourselves to finitely presented algebras. Because what we need to know this constellation, this this kind of finitely many elements, it's finite sums. Yeah, so it's so there's something really nice about finitely generated guys. And choose generators, finite collection of generators. And then we make a new algebra, like B, depending on my algebra C and this collection of generators, which is will be algebra generated by my, my algebra AC. Then I add kind of formal star copy, so get an uh, get. Elements a i, element a a cross, uh, all relations in a plus conjugate relations, and plus one extra relation. Sum of commutators is equal to zero. It's really strange relation. Uh, why it's why I insist on it? 
kind of theorem. Uh, we can consider finite dimensional star representations of this algebra of this double ions collection of energies and map to uh, uh, restrict to A. In this algebra, we get semi exactly all semi simple finite dimensional representations. It's uh, element in a of geometric invariant theory. Uh, stability and so on. Mm. And you see that these things does not depend on generators. And what was on, it looks that this be, uh, uh, so the hope that one can actually write uh, some differential questions we change generators a little bit how identify star completions when we get some kind of differential equations in the star algebras so the guess is certain kind of a star completion of of b is does not depend on generators one should really make some bounds for some differential equations when we change function of generators in some generators. And this will be kind of C star algebra uh, responsible for your algebra, non commutative algebraic variety. And then one can go to usual case theory for such algebras. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we have this special icon for clapping hands. And now let's go ahead with questions. Alan, why don't you begin? Yes, uh, let me just clarify something in my mind because the, um, of the following. I mean, when we consider when one considers the cyclic cocycle, which is the character of the Dirac operator, or even the phase of the Dirac operator, the Oak shield class gives the integration on the top dimension, but there are lower classes yeah, which come a... from the Ea genus. Yeah, and yeah, I, I guess they don't intervene in the pairing you were talking about, Maxim, because you are taking yeah, a, yeah, a cycle which which has the right yeah, dimension. Little collections, but essentially doesn't contain. Really. I, I cannot hear what you say, Maxim. Yeah. I think it's it's maybe it will give some little corrections, but the numbers will be essentially the same after finite linear. Aha, uh -huh, this is what you say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, uh, still, I mean, it's it's quite yeah, important. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I want I want to say something about this because. If you want, um, uh, the Oak shield class is much easier to compute than the full cycle, cyclic cycle. And, uh, but, and there are very good cases in which, uh, I mean, the, 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 the pairing, if you want on the case theory side, it's, it's quite, a, there is a, a quite natural way of knowing that the lower classes are, va are vanishing. Yeah. So, I mean, there is a whole discussion around this, which is quite important for the, um, uh, for the physics uh, on the physics side, so I don't know if this will enter. I don't know. Now, in, in, in fact, I can make a little remark. Yeah. Calculation. Uh, we have this B B this stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you're interested in specific n, uh, what you want. Uh, um, uh, you want a functional yeah sure no no but there, there you are going to reach the oxygen class i'm pretty sure yes Absolutely. because you are, you are going to pair with something which is oxygen close vanishing, yeah. vanishing on uh, on image of one b another b which is exactly getting... exactly yeah yeah okay it's not this, you don't get this projective limit sorry and for reducing... exactly exactly no but that's exactly what i was going to say what i was going to say is that in fact you just need to because of the question of the filtration by dimensions and so on you just need to pair it in such a way and then it's fine there is no problem yeah yeah it's a really kind of countable dimensional data yeah, yeah. So... okay okay anybody else richard I have, to, I have to think a bit first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. So maybe I would like to ask about the uh, relation between these periods and values of zeta function at uh, odd uh, 
about uh, positive integers. Uh, but usual values of zeta functions are given by iterated integrals and then can be replaced by non without boundaries. It's very easy. You know, like z equals three is integral over some super integral. I get some integral with some domain and then using this uh, conic bundles one increase things and get this close integral without any trouble. Okay, so maybe let me be more specific. So uh, what are the consequences of this period conjectures about these values of zeta, uh, uh, no, zeta no, function? It's a whole paper which you wrote with Zagir in 2001 uh, was exactly to explain that something which wasn't really properly formulated by Billinson, uh, that values of L functions or leading coefficients of L functions are all periods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's Okay, Adam. Okay, thank you. I don't see any raised hands. Tomek, how about you? Yes, I would have a question uh, about uh, the Picard-Fuchs uh, equation. Uh, your your example of this exotic non-commutative period uh, depended on uh, infinite dimension when when this Picard-Fuchs cannot be fulfilled. Yes, yes, yes. Also, with some kind of interesting things which can mm -hmm. maybe appears in resurgence here we get like mm -hmm. operation of structure but what, what happens if you have some classical space classical variety and you deform it like like a non-commutative torus what, what is happening to uh, to this uh, picard fuchs equation yeah no no what, what, for example i explained this c star square usual commutative algebraic torus deformed to non, non commutative torus mm -hmm. to get one homology in usual periods but here when i remove curve uh, yes, you remove kind of it's collapsed uh, in classical limit. You have, in fact, you remove infinitely many curves which are collapsed in to, to the one in classical limit. So, the, so from the point of view of classical algebraic geometry, so this is removing infinitely many curves. Is yeah, it's, it's possible. Analog. Yeah, in yeah, classical, it, it, when q is yeah. equal to one, you remove only one curve. Yes, or when q is the root of one, you remove finitely many curves. So are interpreting uh, inverting of infinity uh, many uh, elements polynomials yeah polynomials yes as, as uh, yeah yeah so 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 but but the, what's the relation between the commutative localization and and uh, removing this these curves in this non commutative setting is there some analogy is is some non commutative uh, localization sorry is there, is there some uh, non commutative localization uh, according to which you can interpret inverting these polynomials as, uh, as, uh, as a kind of localization? Yeah, it's, it's what I wrote. You, you can see the elements of your ring. They look yeah. generally like this. And if you put things on the, it, there's no aura property here for this. Yeah, there's no aura property, yes. So, yes, yeah, that's, and that's exactly what you get that kind of infinity many denominators. But even if if our condition would would be fulfilled, the size and I don't think you get this infinite rank behavior. Mm -hmm. So so the crucial so, so the crucial argument is infinite dimension. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Actually, I have to admit that I'm not totally sure that all this uh, what I told about these examples is really valid. But uh, I, I didn't really wrote classes in periodic cyclic homology. Anyway. Well, you use the phrase potential example at a certain moment, so it's yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> it's a guess. <laughs> yeah. You see, this is what seminars are for. I mean, you can exactly you know, speculate. Boris, go ahead. You are muted, Boris. Yeah. Have to unmute. Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. Now. So again, with this example on uh, with the localization, what's the status? You have the proposed algebra and uh, the co-cycle, yeah. Uh, so uh, what I done? It's 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 this kind of a proposed algebra. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, okay. And then, then I get the differential gradient algebra as coson complex. I say this is like tangent uh -huh. trivialized, uh -huh. which I really don't understand what I'm telling you. Uh -huh. something preferred. And then I say that the periodic cyclic homology should be calculated through the scope coson complex. Okay. And then, uh -huh. which it traces like residues. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's so really convenient that one should really be filled with details. Yeah, it's not. Uh -huh. Not really example, but my guess it's the trace of one over p is it's example of the period in this example for some uh -huh. and is it kind of intuitive or what should one think about the Fred Hall model of which it should be a character? Ah, it's something very easy. If you get quantum torus, uh no, suppose we have first classical torus, yeah. Uh -huh. you, you consider the project of two circles. So circles so uh -huh. Laurent polynomials. In Laurent polynomials, you get uh -huh. project positive and negative part. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, this one. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Something like this. I see. I see. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Great. Anybody else? Masoud, you seem to be like a tiger trying to jump. So. Mm -hmm. No, no, I wasn't. No, thank you. I, just a very general, I mean, very, very simple remark I, I really have that uh, this might be very useful, in fact, to prove uh, relations between periods, classical periods, just yes, by yes. going by going through these non-commutative things. It might yes, be very yeah. useful. Yeah, in fact, there was something which I didn't even touch. Um, maybe I'll just go to extra page. Mm. So the, the guess is the following. Uh, ah, there was, there was a story, for example, if you consider commodity of group JL and Z, yeah, with Russian coefficients, there are KT operators here, and you get kind of automorphic L functions, mm -hmm. but actually a number theoretic. Mm -hmm. So it's something very, very strange. You get this, uh, uh, something which is not Shumura variety, and commodity looks like some piece of commodity of some algebraic variety. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, people check on computer for some examples in JH3. And the guess is the following. If we have Lie algebra, uh, Lie algebra over Q, and you have uh, arithmetic subgroup, then you take something like UG, uh, and uh, uh, you have kind of group algebra of arithmetic subgroup, and semi-direct product of UG and mod out, maybe mod out by some casimirs. Mm. Now you get some algebra like this, very, very non-commutative, but from a point of view of direct algebraic geometry, it's very nice. It's like, again, like funny type algebras. And then periods for these guys will be related to what people call periods in theory of automorphic forms. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you very much, Maxim. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Anybody else? I'm scanning through all participants. Don't see any raised hands. Okay, Richard, did you have enough time to think? <laughs> it doesn't go that fast. <laughs> okay. So there's the other question. Maxim, if you don't mind, I want to ask something extremely naive and perhaps stupid, but I, I, I'm slightly confused about one thing. And apologies again for not muting myself when thinking a lot. I forgot to mute. Um, uh, so um, I understand uh, that you are looking for some uh, unusual numbers coming from the pairing between so your Fred Holm module and uh, cyclic homology class, right? And, 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 and of course, uh, when the cyclic homology class comes from K theory, the pairing must be an integer. So you are interested in, in cyclic homology classes that are beyond uh, the image of a turn character, right? Class for algebra or rational numbers, yeah, some like analog yeah. differential form, yeah, not turn character, yeah. Okay. Yes, this is correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't screw it up. No, 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 in fact, uh, the thesis of Lode was explaining why, um, you know, you couldn't get um, a rational map from the, uh, if I remember, yeah, with Laurent uh, series with rational okay. coefficients. Yeah. 
Okay. With the one to the sphere, precisely because two pi is uh, is yes. a transcendental number. Yes. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Yes. For the third character. Yes. Thank you so much. Keep yes. Example in mind. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody happy? Alain, are you happy? More questions, yeah. discussions? Yeah yeah. 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 Sure. Perfect. Okay. So let's thank Maxime again. Thanks again. Thanks, okay. I stop recording.